Today is January 30th, and the kirtan that was going on January 25th, it's still going on today. And I'm still wearing the same clothes. That's amazing. Okay. So, this, today's quote is entitled, Subtle Enjoyment. When we hold on to thoughts of material enjoyment, we are trying to enjoy subtly what we have given up grossly. So the mind is a sense, and what you can't always enjoy with your body, sometimes it's more enjoyable than your imagination because you can imagine it to be any way you want. And you, so you can create like a fiction story and then enjoy as you like. So that's the nature of the mind, you know. It's, it can dream, dream anything. But the problem is sometimes we give up something and then we dream about enjoying. And that's called duplicity, which in Chetan Charitamrita, uh, Prabhupada explains it's, it's uh, inside you're one thing, outside you're another thing. Also called charlata, which means simplicity, which also means alignment or congruity. What you are outside and what you are inside, it's the same. That outside isn't a show. So it's something to consider that although we've given up something, in our minds we may meditate on enjoying it. And of course, because we're conditioned and we have many samskars or impressions, these, these thoughts come up. So in one sense, it's to be expected that we may think that way. But if we dwell on it, if we think, well, I can't enjoy it because I've made a vow not to enjoy it, but we dwell on it, then I would question how deeply that vow was made. Because a nice meditation is if we are meditating on doing something that we've promised ourselves or promised our spiritual master we're not going to do, then did we actually fully commit? Because one would think, if I fully commit to doing something or fully commit to not doing something, then I wouldn't dwell on doing or not doing it. I've committed to do it, I wouldn't dwell on not doing it. I've committed not to do it, I wouldn't dwell on doing it if I'm totally committed. So this idea of thinking, well, I'm not doing it with my body, I can do it within my mind, it just indicates that we're not committed to whatever it was that we were supposedly committed to. That's one thought. The other thought is that you might think, well, I'm not doing it, it's only in my mind, I'm only thinking about it, and so there's no reaction. But there is a reaction because it's a contaminating thought, and a contaminating thought means contaminated heart, or it means the heart is contaminated, which is why we're thinking of it, or we think of it and it contaminates our heart. So we definitely are affected by our thoughts. And as Krishna says, dayato visham pungsam, what you meditate on, you become attached to. So... Don't think you can meditate on something and focus on it on a regular basis and not become attached to it. It's dangerous. Maybe you won't always become attached, but generally the more you think about something, the more you'll become attached. So Krishna says, Mitya-chara, in, in I think third chapter of the Gita, if you, if you restrain your senses but you meditate on them, then you're considered a pretender. False. Hypocrisy. So, Prabhupada, Lord Chaitanya didn't want us to be hypocrites. Just wherever you're situated in life, be real about that. And don't, don't show the world you're one thing and internally be another thing. The better you show the world and internally be the same thing. Show the good and be the good. Anyway, some thoughts about, you know, so we... These are thoughts to help us become more controlled in our internal thinking and, and don't think it's, it's okay because I'm not doing it, I can think about it. And it really, it's like they say drinking on a fast day, you go underwater and you drink water and nobody sees you. So something like that. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.